Hello, and welcome to Velaction Continuous Improvement's presentation on the five whys. I'm Jeff Hajek, author of What Do You Mean I Gotta Be Lean? Let's start out right away by explaining what exactly the five whys is. It's a problem-solving tool that helps you find the underlying reason that a problem occurred, the root cause. Before we get started, just a few things to keep in mind. First, although this presentation uses a shop floor example, the tool is equally useful in the office. Second, if I use a term that you're not familiar with, there's a good chance you can find out more information from the Lean Dictionary on my website, www.volaction.com. Finally, if you like this presentation and want more information on the five whys, we offer a free six-page detailed PDF on the subject. It's available through the five whys entry in our Lean Dictionary. Okay, now let's get started. So, let's assume that you show up for work one morning and notice a pool of green coolant all over the floor next to a machine. The question becomes, what is your problem-solving approach when you identify an abnormal condition like this? Do you clean up the mess and go about your day? Or do you try to uncover the real reason the machine is leaking and prevent it from happening again? I'm sure you'd want to prevent it from recurring, so you might decide to start your problem-solving with a 5 whys analysis. I want to caution you here. There are some limitations to using the five whys. In fact, some lean practitioners won't even use it for the simple fact that it is not repeatable. Different people might get different results if they both went through the process, or the same person might get a different result if they did the analysis on a different day. I tend to like it for simple, low-risk problems. It's also a good starting point when you're trying to attack a more complicated problem. After you identify the symptom, you ask why and come up with a cause. In this case, the cause of the coolant on the floor was a leaky machine. We then ask why again. Why was the machine leaking? Sometimes the answer will be obvious. Other times we'll take some searching or getting some experts involved. In this case, let's say that the problem is a leaky seal. This is where the five whys starts to pay off. A band-aid approach would be to replace the seal. Of course, if you just did that, there's a good chance the problem would recur. That's because the leaky seal is just a symptom. Continuing to ask why gets you down to the root cause. You then keep up the process, asking why again. And again. Just a point on the five whys. It doesn't always end up at five. Sometimes it is more, sometimes it's less. Five is just a number that will almost always get you to the root cause. When you get to the fifth why, you are most likely at the root cause. We're at the point now where you can see one of the problems with the five whys being inconsistent. Some people might decide to keep going and look at why parts are being dropped. In this situation though, if the screen isn't damaged, shavings can't get into the coolant. We can permanently prevent leaking coolant by installing a guard over the screen. Let's summarize the benefits of the five whys for a moment. Being easy to teach is important. In strong lean companies, leaders mentor their teams. Remember, managers are not routinely teaching classes. The easier a tool is to teach, the more effectively managers can transfer that knowledge. And, if it's easy to teach, it's probably easy to use. The Five Whys is a starter tool. It gets people accustomed to structuring their thinking. And much of lean relies on this structure. Finally, the five Y slows down action and prevents the rush to judgment that often results in treating symptoms rather than real problems. Now, let's go over the drawbacks. I'm going to say this again. The five Ys is not a repeatable tool. This is because it doesn't require a single number to do it. Another problem is that the results are easily biased, whether intentionally or unintentionally. It is easy to nudge the outcome to get a comfortable result or the result that you're partial to. Part of this bias comes from the fact that the five whys relies on personal experience to make decisions. You have to have an understanding of the problem to know what to look for. It isn't a great tool if you're not accustomed to the process. The five whys looks for a single cause. In reality, many problems you face are the result of multiple factors. Finally, the five whys is okay to use alone for very simple issues but should have a more data-driven tool accompany it for high-risk or important problems. Okay, that concludes the instruction on this course. 
I like wrapping things up by talking about where you go from here. I'm a big believer that team members will be unlikely to use tools such as this one if they are not engaged and committed to the Lean process. And they won't do that unless they understand how Lean can benefit them personally. My book, What Do You Mean I Gotta Be Lean, gives over 100 practical solutions to common Lean problems. Overcoming these obstacles lets people focus on the value that Lean offers them. I encourage you to look at my website, www.valaction.com, for more information. Finally, I want to make sure that I thank you for taking the time to listen to this presentation. Don't forget to download your free six-page PDF file with more five wise information. I'm Jeff Hajek, wishing you all the best on your lean journey.